Hey, welcome to Physics with Sean, and let's uh, do another physics practice problem. So this time we want to find the tension in each chord if the weight being suspended by the chords is 4 newtons. And the diagram for this problem looks something like this. And as always, when solving problems like this, I usually like to draw a free body diagram to make things a little bit easier to visualize. Uh, and so here I'm going to label the forces on each of the chords and keep in mind the angles that they were making with the ceiling. And when we have static systems like this, we want to consider the equation force equals mass times acceleration. And the important insight here is that because the system is static, the acceleration must be zero. So the sum of all the forces being applied to the system must be equal to zero. And even more specifically, we want to consider the fact that the sum of the forces in the x and y directions, the components of the forces, must also equal zero. So starting with the x components first, I'll draw a reference on our free body diagram, and from that we can extract the x components of each tension of the chords. For the first tension, we can get the x component of the force by multiplying the overall force, T1, with the cosine of the angle that it makes at the ceiling, in this case 30 degrees. We want to make sure that we include the minus sign here since the component of the force is pointed in the negative direction. And similarly for T2, the x component of the force is T2 times the cosine of 45 degrees. Then the sum of those two forces together must still be equal to zero. And with some similar steps, some drawings on our free body diagram, some trigonometry, we can get the y components of the first tension force and the second tension force. And this time we'll need to consider the force being applied by the block, the four newtons. And we'll make sure to include that and also consider it as a negative value because its vector is pointed in the negative direction. And finally, we can solve for t1 and t2 because we now have two equations that we can use to solve for those two unknowns.